I'm Mike, I'm a petrologist, which means I'm interested in rocks, which is the stuff below the critical zone, all the way down to the center of the Earth. Um, I'm interested in uh, what happens to rocks when they're deformed, when they move through orogenic belts in the crust. So I'm interested in changes in pressure, temperature, and the rates at which the, those processes happen. Rocks that get hot enough in orogenic belts start to melt. So I'm interested in how that melt is produced, how it segregates, and how it's extracted. Um, that's the process of intracrustal differentiation. I'm also interested in how we produce crust in the first place. Um, and I'm very interested in how all of these processes might have changed over time as the Earth has cooled down since its origin. Uh, one of the things I thought I would show you is a couple of uh, interesting bits of petrology. There are some white uh, dike-like features here, which superficially look like granite. The difference between them and granite is that they don't have much feldspar, and the replacement for that is actually a phengitic mica, which records pressures that are in the realm of ultra high pressure metamorphism, so higher than 2.7 GPA. So this probably represents something like a solute rich supercritical fluid that evolved to a hydrous melt and crystallized at ultra high pressure temperatures, ultra high pressures. The slide on the right simply shows you a thin section with the first order lambda plated. And if you look at the pale yellowy orange material, you'll see that it's all in optical continuity. But it's forming along grain boundaries, and there's an irregular interaction here. It's basically recording a reaction that produces melt by dehydroxylation of um, onthocytic pyroxene as it decompresses from ultra high pressure conditions back to approximately MOHO depths. That's a, a, a new, new uh, realization that uh, uh, has only recently been put in the literature by, by, by us. And then on the right, I've got so just three examples of things that we've done this year. Uh, secular changes in metamorphism and uh, cooling rates recording changes in plate tectonics. You may not be aware that uh, in, in the Earth's middle age, there are some unusual rock types. Massive anorthosites are almost entirely restricted by volume to the Mesoproterozoic, so we can ask the question why. And that's also true of Rapakibi sweet rocks that are limited to the late Paleoproterozoic and early Mesoproterozoic. And then finally, of course, the origin and evolution of the continents on which we live, and uh, an underappreciated mecha mechanism, I think, that might be responsible for the continental nuclei uh, is impact. Thank you. By the way, I'm happy to serve on a committee if you would like to benefit from any of this. And if you simply want a conversation, just show up in my office. <laughs>